classic Christmas Malcolm and Wise in 15 minutes on BBC One, Diana Rigg is among the guests in a 1975 show. Now on BBC One, the main evening news with Justin Webb. The former governor of Parkhurst Jail says his removal from his job was politically motivated. And John Marriott accuses the Home Secretary of making policy on the hoof. Relatives mourn the victims of yesterday's fire in India, which killed at least 400 people. And Leeds spoil Manchester United's Christmas. Good evening. The former governor of Parkhurst Prison, John Marriott, has made a stinging criticism of the Home Secretary's handling of the prison service. Mr Marriott, who was removed from his job after three life prisoners escaped from Parkhurst last January, says he was made a scapegoat. He's accused Michael Howard of a constant knee-jerk reaction to events. John Marriott said there was a fair degree of skullduggery in the way he was removed from his job as governor of Parkhurst. In his first interview since leaving the prison service, Mr Marriott accused the Home Secretary, Michael Howard, of creating a scapegoat culture. I think he mistakes public performance, um, public rhetoric with strong leadership. I think he's quite a small-minded man in many ways. Um, and that there is a, a kind of constant knee-jerk reaction to particular events, so that policy is being made on the hoof. The seeds of today's row between John Marriott and Michael Howard were planted in January, when Mr Marriott was removed from office just a few days after the breakout. The official report into the Parkhurst escape highlighted stresses at every level of the prison service. Michael Howard responded by sacking its Director General, Derek Lewis. His successor has still not been appointed. The search for the three missing prisoners ended successfully after five days, but the repercussions have lasted much longer. Opposition MPs believe Mr Marriott has exposed a continuing crisis of morale within the prison service. But the prison's minister says Mr Marriott can't blame the escape on a lack of resources. After all, the Learmont report, which was an independent report, found that if many routine procedures had been carried out, just as simple as counting prisoners in and out of recreation, keeping control of tools, making sure that officers were familiar with the security manual, if very basic routine procedures like that had been carried out, which we would expect in any prison, then the escape also would not have happened. The Home Secretary remains convinced that prison works, but with the jails now filled to overflowing, making sure they continue to work may be something of a challenge. Joshua Rosenberg, BBC News. The first funerals have been taking place in the Indian state of Haryana after a fire in which at least 400 people died. Many were children who'd been attending a school prize giving in the town of Dabwali. Today the authorities announced new safety measures. There is no disguising the anguish or the scale of this. Everywhere there's the grim evidence and the search for relatives and friends. This man couldn't find the bodies of his wife and two children. I've lost everything, he says. More than a thousand people had been crammed into this building. Hundreds of school children were receiving their annual awards. The fire is believed to have started after an electrical fault. Rescue services told of a stampede to get out. There was only one exit. The local hospitals have been besieged by those looking for family and those needing help. Some of the survivors described events to journalists. I looked all around me and there were just flames. People were clambering over each other in the rush, the panic and the confusion. A state inquiry, three days of mourning and compensation have already been announced here, but the investigation will only confirm the obvious, that human error is responsible for this disaster and distress. Matthew Emery Waller, BBC News. An 11-year-old boy from Lancashire is critically ill after being savaged by two Rottweiler dogs. David Kearney was mauled when he climbed into the backyard of a house in Darwin. 11-year-old David Kearney had been taking a shortcut to his home in Darwin in Lancashire. The police say he climbed over a fence into a backyard where three Rottweilers were kept. Two of the dogs gave David a savage mauling, leaving him with horrific injuries to his face and body. The owners, alerted by the boy's screams, managed to pull the dogs away. The attack has left his parents deeply distressed. I had a look at him, and his face had blown up like a big balloon. He's not the boy that's in the picture. He's a completely different boy. He's got that, bad, he's bad, that badly marked, I don't even recognise him, he's my own son. 
David, whose condition in hospital is described as critical but stable, is likely to need extensive plastic surgery. Lancashire police say the two dogs, which had been kept in a secure yard, have since been destroyed at the owner's request. No decision has been taken about further action. John McIntyre, BBC News. Hampshire police say they're almost certain that the missing French student Céline Figar has been abducted. They've released a photofit picture of a lorry driver they want to question. He was seen with her at a service station near Newbury last Tuesday. There are fresh hopes for peace throughout the Middle East after President Assad said Syria was in favour of speeding up the peace process. Talks between Syria and Israel start again next week. In Bethlehem, Palestinians are combining Christmas festivities with celebrations to mark their new freedom from Israeli rule. The Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem left the old city this morning to begin his Christmas journey to Bethlehem. Every year since 1967, he's been escorted by an Israeli security convoy, a visible symbol of the Israeli occupation. But now the balance of power in the Holy Land has begun to shift. Just outside Bethlehem, the Patriarch was put in the hands of Palestinian police. Bethlehem is now their city. Well, I think it is one of the best days of my life. I have attended this ceremony for many times, but this is the loveliest and the most beautiful one. In a town one-third Christian, two-thirds Muslim, this Christmas has become an unprecedented unifying event. The only guns on display were fired in celebration. In recent years, Christmas Eve in Bethlehem has been a sullen affair. The atmosphere soured by the presence of Israeli troops. But now those soldiers are gone. Joy and goodwill prevail. The question is, can the optimism felt here today help the Israelis and the Palestinians forge a new relationship and a lasting peace? In the Church of the Nativity, Christian leaders and pilgrims of all denominations are gathered for midnight mass. Palestinian national joy overshadowed religion outside. Inside, time-honored traditions were observed. Suha Arafat, wife of the PLO leader, arrived alone. Her husband, a Muslim, followed later. This was, though, a service free of politics. Outside the church, the street party will last well into Christmas Day. The little town of Bethlehem is no longer dogged by confrontation. This year, it's a beacon of hope to a region still seeking lasting peace. Stephen Sacker, BBC News, Bethlehem. Here, Yorkshire Water is insisting that the decision of its chairman, Sir Gordon Jones, to retire is not connected to criticism of the way the company has dealt with this year's drought. Campaigners are calling for the rest of the board to resign. The official line on Sir Gordon's departure is that he's simply taking a normal, if early, retirement. But confirmation of his going comes at the end of a disastrous year for Yorkshire Water. A drought which left parts of the county resembling a desert, the threat of rotor cuts while pipelines were leaking heavily. Emergency tankering brought some relief, but even that had to be adjourned over Christmas under residents' protests about noise and fumes. Consumer campaigners say it's not only the chairman's performance which is open to criticism. Well, I think it's been a disaster, but I don't think it's entirely his fault. The responsibility has to be with the whole of the board of the Yorkshire Water PLC. And I think that is the reason that many customers would like to see the whole board go, not just the chairman. Sir Gordon has made it very clear in July of this year that he would be seeking to retire before the formal retirement age of February 1997, when he indeed is indeed 70. Uh, so it's come as no surprise this at all. Despite Yorkshire water denials, there's a growing impression that Sir Gordon's departure, together with other executive changes, add up to a company trying hard to buff up its managerial image. Mike Mackay, BBC News, West Yorkshire. The Turkish Prime Minister Tansu Çiller is struggling to hold on to power tonight as first results in the Turkish general election come in. Early indications are that her Conservative Party's opponents, the pro-Islamic Welfare Party, may emerge as the biggest group in Parliament. Serb and government forces in Bosnia have begun to exchange prisoners of war, a key part of the peace accord. Hundreds were freed, but not all the planned exchanges were successful, and two British soldiers were injured at Sansky Most after driving over a landmine. Neither was badly hurt. The Bosnian peace plan produced its first tangible result today. 113 Serb prisoners of war were exchanged for 83 Bosnians. For once, both sides were satisfied. Elsewhere, however, things did not run so smoothly. 
The exchange we were taken to see collapsed when the Serbs refused to take part. This man had been hoping the Serbs would release his three-year-old son. When they pulled out, the Croats who had brought their prisoners of war to the front line in a bus did the same, much to the annoyance of the British Army. I think it's immoral that you've got prisoners in the vehicle behind me that you're really? not prepared to release. And if Brigadier Dragicevic thought that he was going to make a public gesture of goodwill on Christmas Eve, then you need to tell him from me that it's backfired publicly. The Croats then drove off with their prisoners, having tested British patience. And I shall express uh, my personal frustration that having offered to come here today to oversee this, that actually it hasn't happened. Um, I've got better things to do today on Christmas Eve as well, and they're all to do with trying to make this peace agreement work. Whether they like it or not, the warring parties are going to have to get used to doing things NATO's way. They may have refused this time, but in less than a month, they're going to have to release all their prisoners. The Royal Artillery held its carol service today on the top of Mount Igman. These men may have preferred to have been at home, but they were doing their best to enter into the Christmas spirit. In the next few days, these troops will move up onto the confrontation line. Tom Carver, BBC News, Gornivaku. Manchester United lost the chance to close the gap at the top of the Premiership. They were beaten 3-1 at Leeds and stayed 10 points behind the leaders, Newcastle. Man United needed a good result against old rivals Leeds to keep up the pressure on league leaders, Newcastle. From early on today, though, they were in trouble when Nicky Butt handled and referee Gallagher awarded a penalty. Leeds captain Gary McAllister wasted no time and dispatched the spot kick high to the left of Peter Schmeichel. Howard Wilkinson's side seemed to be in control, but a mistake by Gary Speed allowed Butt to cross, for Andy Cole to end his recent goal drought and level the score. Ten minutes before half-time, Leeds restored their advantage when Garnet and Tony Yeboa ran from the halfway line and shot home for his 14th goal of the season. The Yorkshiremen stayed in charge in the second half and sealed victory in the 73rd minute. Swedish international Thomas Brolin crossed and Brian Dean headed home to put Leeds 3-1 up. The defeat means United stay 10 points behind Newcastle, who they face at Old Trafford on Wednesday night. Nick Dixon, BBC News. Heavy snowfalls have cut off electricity to thousands of homes in the north of Scotland. Shetland, the Isle of Lewis and Orkney have been hit by the worst blizzards for 40 years. Central Scotland is also covered by snow. The bad weather is heading south, bringing a white Christmas to parts of northern England as well. And that is it from the newsroom tonight. Whether your Christmas is white or not, have a good one. Good night. A very good evening to you. Yes, many places will get a white uh, Christmas, particularly those living in the north. It's been pretty miserable up there today. North Rona, for instance, blizzards, winds gusting up to 115 miles an hour, heavy snow, and temperatures around about zero. And certainly we've got a weather warning out for central and northern Scotland. Heavy snow, gale force winds giving blizzard conditions, and these continuing overnight and pushing the way southwards too. We're going to find some snow coming into Northern Ireland across the northernmost uh, parts of England in particular. And there will be some snow at times down in the south, although central southern parts of England probably not seeing very much and turning misty. And a very, very cold night, as you can see. A penetrating frost, uh, minus 7 in the southern parts of Scotland, minus 2 in the central highlands, but with that uh, gale force wind really, really penetrating. That's what the weather map's going to look like for Christmas Day. Uh, the wind's coming down from the north, these low-pressure areas, adding to the complications. So snow showers, some heavy ones over central and northern parts of Scotland. And there could be a period of rather more persistent snow over northeast England, spreading its way down into northern parts of Norfolk, and then turning rather more showery as we go through the afternoon. Still some wintry showers on north-facing coast in the west. Probably not too many at all in central and southern parts, although I couldn't rule out the odd snow flurry now and again. A cold day, uh, below freezing in the north, and only three, as you can see, down in the south. Well, from all the weather team, I'd like to wish you a very Merry Christmas in whatever language you like. That's it. A very good night, here. Yeah. How's the family, Ryan? For John Ryan, there's no escape. I'm after the man who tried to kill my family. No mercy. Where's Sean Miller? Nowhere to hide. Yeah, come on, Ryan. Show yourself. Hey, 
Patriot Games, Boxing Day 920, on BBC One.